So back in um, like 2018, when I, when I first came to Argentina to study, right? I was like fucking around on the internet. This was before I was an internet personality, you know, just m messing around on the internet, like on um, Quora, which is like this web, it's like Yahoo Answers updated, you know? And I was, I was like interested in like talking about Argentine history and stuff. But the only thing that anyone, anyone ever talks about about Argentina was fucking the Nazis and the Falklands or no, no, La Malvinas, the Malvinas War. Okay, so it was like really annoying because, you know, I didn't really care about those topics. But this this fucking guy, this this there was this one guy who replied to every single every single post about the Falklands with like this absolutely insane story about the war when he was like, um, oh, hi, 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 hey, everyone, I am a. I, I am an eminent historian and, 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 I, and, I, and I have found secret data that proves that Argentina, that like 50, 50, 50 Argentine soldiers died in the initial landing, even though the, even though the, the official tally of deaths is one. Oh, and also for, throughout the entire conflict, the deaths of thousands of Argentine soldiers was, were hidden, even though the, the, the official death toll is 600. And I was like, wow, this guy is insane, right? Basically, like just absolutely crazy guy spreading like just complete bullshit so i, I like looked into him more and, he, and he's like he, he wrote a book about that he wrote like a fucking book spreading that completely ridiculous idea that, that apparently like the argentine government the argentine dictatorship collaborated with the british government to to hide the real death toll of the war at the time like i was i was a loser student with too much time on my hands so um i wrote like a like i, I went like in depth on it right I wrote like a blog post on this guy. And I also wrote like a, a Reddit thing too. Wait, ask, it was on like bad history. What this guy does, right, is he posts like questions on Quora on an alternate account. Like obviously, right? Like this is a question that no one would, this is a question that no one would ever ask like normally. Like, this, like no one ever thinks about, did Argentina cover up military losses in the Falklands? This guy just fucking made it up. And he goes like, yes, they did in fact. And he answers it himself. He has 1.5 thousand answers. He says, yes, they did in fact. This is a fact. Argentine claims of only one man killed in the initial invasion were false as the truth was actually 70 and 80. And apparently all the soldiers who were there, like, you know, no one said anything about this. And like the British government covered it up as well. And it's all just to like, you know, sell his book, right? A book that's basically based on this idea of like some grand conspiracy theory. Where um like there was this great cover up and like twenty five thousand people died or whatever. Here's what he said: like Argentine releases in June and July 1982 listed seven hundred confirmed killed and twenty five hundred missing. Right? Of course, he's you know he doesn't he doesn't provide these Argentine releases. You know he doesn't actually show anyone these these sources, but trust him, they did. And a year after the war, they still admitted five hundred to one thousand missing to the Argentine family still looking for their loved ones. And his source for this is like this, this, this old NYT article. And all that it says is that um, there is confusion at home about the identities of the about 1,000 Argentines who were dead or missing after British forces took the island last June. So he takes that and he says, and he says that, oh, that, you know, they had confirmed 1,000 dead. When this is like, you know, from literally immediately after the war, when no one knew how many people had actually died yet. And it was 650. So this guy was like insane. So I looked into him, right? And it's like, oh, so he claims to be like a historian, but um, he's actually like just some random guy who wrote a book based on a completely like a just bonkers conspiracy theory. So I looked into him and I found like um, a conflict on between Wikipedia editors that he was involved in. A, like a long time ago. And you have to understand, right? Wikipedia editors are, are already really biased towards the, the British side. So you would, ex like, if he was a legitimate source, you would expect him to use him. And it's like, so, so this guy shows up. This guy shows up on Wikipedia. His name is, his name is Real History Man. Real History Man. What an incredible name. And um, so someone noticed that he was editing. He was editing the Wikipedia article and sourcing his own book. So someone said he has a problem that that the only the only reference for this this edit is this book, which is clearly self-published. And then some other some other guy, like a Wikipedia moderator, what a fucking nerd, comes in and says like, "What bona fides does he have to be described as a military historian? I can't find any." 
And then eventually he comes in. He comes into the Wikipedia discussion and like starts defending himself while pretending to be someone else. So at this point I was like, wow, this guy is fucking weird. And, and now he's, he's like pretending to be his friend. That is his claim and I'm lucky enough to know him and a number of these amazing veterans. You know, he doesn't actually provide evidence for any of this shit. He's just like, I find it laughable how you seem intent on being better at Wiki than in actually promoting and representing the historical truth, which my book clearly represents. And like someone's, oh my god, this is like a, a literally like a fucking essay of a reply. Like someone said like, hey, hey man, this book's not peer reviewed though, you know, it's, it's not a valid source of Wikipedia. And he's like, let's talk about peer review. Professor Tony Pollard, head of conflict history at Glasgow University, and also a Falkland specialist, presenter of Nazi, well, it's like a fucking resume. Pre presenter of Nazi megastructures and two men in a trench on the History Channel, considered the UK's top battlefield archaeologist and even possibly the world's top, that his peer review appears in the back cover of that book and in full on the last page. Okay, interesting. That's not what peer review is. Peer review is not a positive review. It's like a, an academic process, you know, where like your, your, your work is reviewed anonymously to see if it's worthy of academic publishing. If he peer reviewed your book, you wouldn't know about it. So I wrote like a blog about this. I don't know if it's still there. I hope it is because otherwise my stream is ruined. Because, you know, I found this fucking hilarious and, you know, it was just a th thing to do at the time. So, like, um, someone messaged Tony, this guy, Tony Pollard, who is an actual academic, and asked him about this stuff. And Tony said, I am not happy with the way that he throws my name around in defense of his book. I wrote an endorsement for a favor, but it does not mean that I agree with everything in it. I will not be so sympathetic to needy writers in the future. Okay, damn, there, there goes, there goes the, the endorsement of that book, you know? And then the guy asked him specifically, what parts of the book do you not agree with? And Tony says, the figures for the Argentine dead, which is the entire point of the book, right? So clearly, this is a British Falklands War historian, an expert on the topic, who Ricky was appealing to as like someone who validates his work. And the guy specifically says that his work is bullshit. So on Wikipedia, like, you know, people, he, he actually got moderated on Wikipedia. I want to see if I can find it. Here it is. He got like, um, in like a moderator dispute on Wikipedia, like a conflict resolution dispute. I didn't know that these exist until I found this. God, Wikipedia. Jesus, man. Like, I'm not, I can't read all of this. It's too long. Every single one of his replies is just like complete crazy blowhard shit. So yeah, I mean, I basically looked into him. He has no credentials as like a historian or whatever, no degree, no nothing. He just like suddenly shows up like with, with a book where he claims to have, um, to have like an absolutely like absurd conspiracy theory that he is the only one who has those proof of. Like basically like 2000 unaccounted for people died, which is like um, five times higher than the official death toll in this conflict on the Argentine side, right? So apparently like 2000 extra people died and no one, no one talked about it. Like no one ever talked about it. He's the first one to find out about it. They just went missing. No, no one said anything. No one noticed their family members didn't care. Ricky D. Phillips is the first one to find out. I mean, he admits that he didn't study history, right? Did you study history? No, completely not. And the reason why he didn't like studying history, British history in particular is very self-deprecating these days. Wow. I wonder if this guy might have a bit of an agenda here. He like had this this absurd self-written biography on his own website. Ricky D. Phillips is a two-time number one best-selling British military historian and author. By the way, he was number one best-selling in the like maritime archaeology section on Amazon. Number one maritime archaeology writer on all of Amazon. Yeah, dude, great job. A popular name on the lecture circuit and in digital military history. His debut work. The first casualty, the untold story of the Falkland Wars, war, achieved global acclaim for its, no it didn't, its handling of the story in what was the world's first free-sided first-person narrative history. What does that even mean? It was especially popular around the world because it proved with vast research beyond all doubt that a great number of losses had been covered up by the Argentine side. So obviously like the entire premise of this is just absolutely insane. The idea that 2,000 people died and 2,000 extra people died in like 1982 at the fucking height of like the, the movement against the dictatorship, you know, people looking for their, their disappeared loved ones, etc. That soldiers were just sent off, 2,000 of them died, No, like the British government covered it up for some reason and also the Argentine government covered it up and no one said anything even though the, the dictatorship fell like less than a year later. 
No one said anything. Apparently, like, this guy is the first one to ever notice that all these people died. So even, like, just, just as a premise, you don't even have to look into it. It's completely fucking absurd. It's just absolutely absurd. But, for, like, he's, like, this absolutely insane guy, right? He talks about me all the time. Like, I wrote this one blog post on him and, like, one um, bad history post on Reddit, like, two years ago. And he still, he talks about me, like, literally endlessly. Like, he made, like, a response to my... To my blog post. And he like, it's like full of these, oh, really? Oh, really, Morgan Freeman? Ha ha ha. Oh, really? Oh, and look at these epic memes. <laughs> Fucking the, the, the poster for Liar Liar. Man, that's a classic. Ha ha ha. You know that, you know, you know that you're dealing with an, with an epic real historian. When he's got, like, his blog post. Like, holy shit, how long is it? I forgot. It just goes on and on. He does all of these things where he's like, a report just said, blah, blah, blah. And it's never linked, of course. I love it. I absolutely love it. This is an absolute classic. Another thing that happened is, like, um, he actually posted on, um, like, like there's, like, this forum, which for some reason has the abbreviation ARS. This is, like, a blog of, like, military, like, people, like, military veterans in the UK, people who are interested in military history and stuff, right? And all of these people basically like shit on him like these people thought that he was he was crazy too people on a on a fucking british military forum atta were attacking the guy who was trying to like glorify the british military with these insane conspiracy theories like imagine just showing up to like a forum of people who you would expect to be on your side and all of them just make fun of you and tell you how fucking stupid you are so there was also like for somehow ricky got invited to like a conference on like a, a legitimate Falklands War conference with like real academics. A, a fairly prominent British journalist was there as an invitee who's done work on the Falklands before called Jimmy Burns. You know, it's supposed to be like a respectable event. There was like Argentines and British both there as they presented papers from Argentines and British people equally. You know, it was supposed to be like fairly respectful between veterans on the different sides, etc. And he starts talking about, um, he doesn't refer to Ricky by name, but he's clearly talking about him. He says, Thankfully, the Navy man had the, had the courtesy not to refer to dead floating Argentines as Eric's, a term invoked by another speaker who had not fought in the war and who had no academic qualification, but who still presented himself as a leading Falklands War historian while unashamedly promoting his book as the definitive account of the resistance put up by the British Marines on the first day of the invasion. So you have like this guy, right? This guy who's never been, never been to the fucking Falklands, you know, didn't fight in the war, isn't a real historian or anything, coming to this event and like trying to fit in with the people, with the people there who like know about, like, you know, know about all of this stuff. And he's like, oh man, don't you just hate those fucking Eric's? And just imagine everyone like looking at him like, like, you know, like Argentine and British veterans together, like looking at him like, like, what the fuck, man? Um, and he said, this speaker found himself upsetting several other delegates, including the war's honored official historian, Sir Lawrence Friedman, who challenged his claims of exclusivity, failing to provide supporting evidence and simply making factual errors. So, yeah, he kind of got rubbish there. I also like this one is less verifiable because it was in private messages and, and the person who who met who emailed me didn't want didn't want me to make their name public but i was um like someone who was at the conference and who ricky like tried to make friends with this was like an actual academic too who was at the conference messaged me and told me that like um like you know ricky was taking people aside and telling them this story about how like um sh like shadowy figures in like fucking stereotypical fucking 50s detective outfits came up to him and said i'm from the british government here here here, take this secret document that, that apparently, like, tells him, like, um, things about the truth of the Falklands War that he has a divine duty to, to reveal. And he was also forced to admit that he had never been to the Falklands when his entire book is framed around this idea that, you know, like, he's the one who went there and did all the research that no one else had ever done and revealed the whole truth. And the person who, who contacted me said that he got up, spoke for half an hour rambling, presenting his evidence and not citing any of his sources. I was sat open mouthed that he was even invited to a serious conference. The organizer intervened at the, intervened at the end and wanted Ricky to answer questions over coffee informally in the lobby. The veterans objected to this though and insisted that we break and then do a formal Q&A. When he returned, he got his ass handed to him. Academics, veterans, islanders, all ripped into his, consp 
all ripped into his conspiracy bollocks and he was browbeaten. You know that it's a real fucking brick because they use the word bollocks. So yeah, I mean, you guys, I'll, I'll link my article in the chat if you guys want to read it. There's one, there's one more thing to this story, right? Also crazy. Just shows you the kind of effort that people need to go to debunk this sort of shit. So Ricky made like a bunch of claims in his book and like with photos and stuff, etc. about like how, oh, I have the proof. I have the proof that like this happened because um, you can see, well, like, you can see the, the damage that's been done to these vehicles, these Argentine vehicles. This guy, he's an Argentine guy. So he went and tracked down all of the, all of the vehicles that this guy claimed had been damaged. The specific vehicles, the exact vehicles, the same serial number and everything. And proved that, and you know, went and took photos of them and showed that they weren't, obviously, right? Absolutely insane shit. Like, I'm not gonna go over it in detail. But this guy, like, traveled across fucking Argentina trying to find the, these vehicles that Ricky claimed had been destroyed and, like, clearly showing. He even made fucking 3D models showing how what he said isn't true. He went and tracked down, like, fucking obscure pictures of these things. Obscure pictures of these videos, like from stills in like obscure documentaries from the 80s that no one ever watched. This fucking absolute fucking charlatan just made up a bunch of shit, just invented a bunch of shit straight up on the spot. Like this British nationalist, nationalist charlatan idiot made up tons of garbage and like everyone basically laughed, like anyone with like an ounce of, ounce of seriousness to them just essentially laughed at him. But some people took it really seriously and debunked it in like the most far away possible. And this guy's like still out there thinking that he's some sort of fucking, um, like, genius. Like, this guy, by the way, I haven't talked about this guy in, like, two years, because, you know, I wrote my blog, what else is there to say, right? He still posts today, claiming, like, every single person who replies to him is me. He thinks that every single person who replies to him is me. Not a fucking joke. He still talks about me. But yeah, that's a story of one of the, one of the Greatest lolcals I've ever seen in my life. Absolute like conspiracy theory shit from a guy with no qualifications whatsoever, who can never show his sources or anything, and like the the biggest ego you could possibly fucking imagine. I, I looked him up like a couple of months later, and he's like such a an attention whore that he he like claimed that he had found the Loch Ness monster. He went and claimed that he had he had like spot he found I found Loch Ness monster right. Just looking for any possible attention possible. And like there was um there was a blog that like debunked his sighting as well. This is like a, a website of people who take the Loch Ness monster seriously, right? Someone found the bigger photo that he took that he took this fucking picture of from his from his from his Facebook that he just posted in the open, like making a joke. This is a Nessie by the bridge to the right, right? See, right over here. And then like he cropped it in like this and went to the media and said and said, oh look, this is fucking, this is Loch Ness Monster, I found, I found the fucking Loch Ness Monster. And apparently no one in the media ha had like the, the thought to go and check his Facebook just to find the, the, the full image that just shows that it's like a fucking little log. This guy is like just one of the best log cows you could ever imagine, honestly. I'm not even mad at him. It's just, he's just endless fucking laughs. Like, he Googles himself all the time, so he's gonna find this, this stream probably and post about it on his Twitter, so look for that.